power helps you live the good life by bringing you closer to your true self. Well, today we're going to be looking at some different studies, also what it takes to live that good life and how to have some future visioning. So today is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. This is episode 111 for For Another Day podcast. Glad you are here. My name is Rick. And I'm going to walk you through today to understand a little bit more about this study and also to understand what it takes to have a good life. So let's dive in. Well, so first of all, let's take a look and understand what does it mean to have a good life? Is it financial stability? Is it relationships? Is it a good education? Is it an intact family? Is it peaceful familial relationships with siblings, with parents, with children? What does it mean when we talk about living the good life? For you, is it about vacations and places that you can go, do, and see? Is it about unplugging from your daily grind? And having that vacay that you need so badly? Or is the vacation not really that important to you? Is living the good life more basic? I have food on the table. I have people around me. So as we talked in the last episode, we were talking about the individualism. And how that's changed, especially in the last 20 years. If you haven't gotten a chance to listen to that podcast, jump back to episode 110 and and take a listen to that. But here we're looking at living that good life. Here we're looking at trying to understand that the good life is self-defined. It's self-defined within culture. So the good life for myself here in Texas might be very different than the good life of someone in Ireland. Shout out to Ireland for all of our listeners. Uh, I saw that the other day come up on the analytics. So that is awesome. Shout out. But here the good life doesn't necessarily give us anxiety, grief, stress. The good life shows that we have pleasure, that we have connection that we have something that we desire. But can you truly look at that and at your life and say that you're happy? Are you even joyful? Joyful is the next powered up level from happiness. Happiness is very temporal. It's very temporary. But joy... Joy is long-standing. So do you have joy in what you do? And not necessarily just in your job or in your career. Remember, a job is but temporary. A career is lifelong. It, it can be long-standing. You know, for myself, I've had many jobs, but my career has been helping others and truly having a heart, finding joy in that. Although it's exhausting day in and day out, listening to clients, counseling clients, I still have a joy that I know that I'm able to give of myself to them. And maybe I can help him. Maybe I can't help. But I'm still being present to them. So living this good life, does it always mean also looking forward? There's the goals that I want to achieve. I want to retire by the age I'm 50. Or is it something more that's right now? Can you experience that joy right now of saying, I do have the good life? I 
have a family. I think that's one thing about COVID is it pulled us all together. Something that we were slowly drifting apart. But the part is, is it held us together too tightly. And by holding us together too tightly, it then became uncomfortable. When can I send my children back to school? When can I get back into my routine? But was that routine your good life? Or treasuring life was your good life? Aero Garden 360 is your chance to grow fresh hydroponic herbs, vegetables, and flowers year-round. I grow enough basil for fresh pesto every two weeks and jalapenos year-round. It's so easy. Click on the link below to start growing yours today. So what does it take to live this good life? Well, I have a study here that says the power helps you live the good life by bringing you closer to your true self. So this is posted from SciPost.org. And we are looking at it coming out of the journal from the Association of Psychological Science in January 29th of 2013. And it says here, how does being in a position of power at work or with friends or in a romantic relationship influence your well-being? We might think that the stereotype that power leads us to unhappiness or loneliness, but new research indicates this is largely untrue. Being in a position of power may actually make people people happy. And so this came out of the University of Tel Aviv uh, from Yona Kiefer and colleagues, and they hypothesized, they, they were asking that holding a position of power, of authority, might enhance subjective well-being through an increased feeling of authenticity Researchers predicted that because the powerful are able to navigate their lives in congruence with their internal desires and inclinations, they feel as if they're acting more authentic to themselves and thus more content. So in their first experiment, the researchers surveyed 350 participants to determine if internal feelings of power are associated with subjective well-being. And they looked at different contexts, in work, with friends, or in romantic relationships. The results showed that people feel powerful in any context that tends to be more content. So the most powerful people surveyed felt 16% more satisfied with their lives than the least powerful people. This effect was more pronounced in the workplace. So powerful employees were 26% more satisfied with their jobs than their powerless colleagues. That power-based discrepancy in happiness was smaller for friendships and romantic relationships. And so the researcher here says that this may be because friendships are associated with a sense of community rather than hierarchy. And therefore having power in this kind of relationship is less important. So they did a second and third experiment and they examined the causal relationships between power, feelings of authenticity, and general well-being, and they manipulated these factors independently. The results revealed that being in a position of power 
causes people to feel more authentic and true to themselves. That is, it allows their actions to more closely reflect their beliefs or desires. And feelings of authenticity in turn enhance subjective feelings of well-being and happiness. Now, by leading people to be true to their desires and inclinations, to be authentic, power leads individuals to experience greater happiness. Now, of course, with all studies, they always propose future research looking at power dynamics or happiness or should authenticity focus on kinds of power both positive such as charisma or negative such as punishment real dark chocolate and pretzel protein bars that both taste great and nourish us nugo offers so many types of bars and cookies for your enjoyment but I always stick with the best. Plus, it's gluten-free. Click the link below to order yours today. So do you feel powerful? Do you have self-confidence, self-esteem? Do you have goals set for yourself that can determine that you're on the right path, that you're doing the right thing, that when it comes to your life, you are happy, maybe even joyful. So that's where I encourage you today. If you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, seek out someone to help you. Seek out someone to come to this understanding of having a, another perspective to examine your life. A life that is in search of change, of betterment. If it's with business, maybe even power. So often we can't vision what's in store from us. You know, some people go ahead and they make these vision boards of what it will be like for them. They put fame and glory and product on the board. Positive psychology encourages you to look at those images. Psychologically, you push yourself towards those images. But is that the image that you're looking for? Does your happiness only come through materialism? Does your happiness only come through climbing that hierarchical ladder at work. Where does that happiness and joy come from? What can you envision and imagine a future with relationships to be like? What can you imagine a future, a future that will change you for the better? that will let you become less anxious, that will help you in how you're able to speak to another person. We have a lot of work to do on ourselves. We have a lot of change that can still happen, which is a reason for, for another day podcast. I did it because I wanted us as a culture to change. I can't be there individually to help each one of you to design an individual plan of change. But hopefully I can encourage you to start looking at ways to make this happen or where to search out for help. So that you can make a difference in your own life in the life of your family, and in your future. So once again, thank you for subscribing and listening. Thank you for pushing that like button that changes the algorithm. I always love comments, and that makes the algorithm go even more crazy. Shoutouts to 
all those in Irving, Texas, in New London, Connecticut. Thank you, listeners there, for making this podcast a podcast for the future. And I encourage you, keep listening. This month of February is going to be a month talking about relationships and talking about change. So let's make it happen. So today I want to leave you with a famous quote from Leo Tolstoy. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. Peace to you today. Until the next time.